Hi, my name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO and founder of Third Stage Consulting Group. We're an independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. Wanted to chat today about Microsoft Dynamics 365 and the SureStep methodology. It's a great approach, great methodology, but we want to talk about what the missing pieces are, the things that you need to augment the methodology provided by the SureStep methodology. So this video is a, a perfect overview for those of you about to implement D365 and perhaps you're, you're trying to figure out what your overall implementation plan is going to look like, how you're going to leverage SureStep and what else you might need to do to make your D365 project successful. If that's the case, then this video is for you. As I mentioned, my name is Eric Kimberling, the CEO and founder of Third Stage Consulting. I've been in the ERP and uh, digital transformation space now for about 20 years. Started my career at one of the big system integrators and have worked with SAP, Oracle, obviously Microsoft D365, number of tier two solutions as well. Um, now I'm the CEO of a technology agnostic firm that helps clients select and implement technology and helps them through their entire digital transformations in a technology agnostic way. So today's video may be focused on D365, but third stage as a company and myself personally are very technology agnostic and have worked with all the leading different uh, providers here uh, in the industry. So what's the problem? Why are we talking about this? What's, uh, what are the gaps that we want to address with the SureStep methodology? So one of the common things we see with clients about to implement D365 is they've made the decision to go with Microsoft D365. They're excited about it. There's a lot of momentum behind it. There's a lot of buzz. Employees want the new solution. And there's a tendency to want to just dive right in and start implementing stuff. And some of the common challenges with that or things that we see happen are that people rush into their implementation without a clear vision or plan. They end up delegating much of the responsibility of the project to their system integrator, which is a big risk in and of itself. And that ends up setting unrealistic expectations for the overall project. So that's one of the challenges we see is SureStep may be a great approach and a good methodology to deploy the technology itself, but there's a lot more to it that we need to get ready for before we just jump right in and start deploying the SureStep methodology and leveraging the system integrator consultants and uh, system integrators. So we call this phenomenon chip, uh, we call the phenomena cliff diving. So in other words, we're just diving right into the implementation. We don't have a plan or a vision or we don't know what we want to be when we grow up. We're going to jump right in and just start deploying the short step methodology. We've got our system integrator here. The meter's running and we're rolling. Now the problem with that is we don't have a clear direction when we do that. There's a, not a clear operational direction. The system integrator takes control of the project when that happens. There's a lot of decisions that are being made while the meter's running. And so we're sitting around a round table in a boardroom trying to figure out what we want our processes to look like and how we want to organize while the meter's running on all the consultants out in the war room. And so we want to make sure that we are more deliberate with our use of consultants and aren't uh, increasing costs in that way. It also results in the technology driving the business rather than the business driving technology. We spend too much time and money on the project. Employees get frustrated. It's too much for the business to absorb, to just adapt to the D365 out of the box. We, we, we need to figure out and understand how we're going to leverage it out of the box. And we also want to figure out uh, how to get that internal ownership and buy-in. So those are just some of the challenges we see when companies dive right in and just start cliff diving into their D365 transformations. So when we look at SureStep, and in particular organizational change, but there's other pieces outside of organizational change that are also missing. So on the left side of the screen, you see the short step methodology, um, high level view of the different steps to deploy the technology. And like I said, I don't have any real beef or you know, big problems with the methodology itself, but it's important to recognize what the methodology is. It's a tool set to help you roll out technology within your organization. It is not a tool set to help you through a transformation. So what we're trying to figure out is how do we leverage this, the short step methodology and augment it with the pieces that are missing to help make this more of a transformation and make sure that we actually get the benefits out of the system, that we don't spend too much time and money implementing the solution, and that ultimately ends up making our business better at the end of the day. So some of the missing pieces we see here that aren't included are things like organizational design. There's no uh, work stream here that's focused on making those decisions to standardize and identify common business processes. The technology can support it however we want to do it. The key is how do we want to do it? How do we want the technology to support and enable those business processes? Change impact analysis. How will D365 change people's jobs? How do we want their jobs to change as a result of the technology? What are roles and responsibilities 
Are we going to move to a shared service model? If so, what does that look like? Those are all the dis discussions we need to be having prior to leveraging the Activate methodology. And then finally, how do we develop the internal skills and competencies that we need, both from a technical and functional D365 perspective, but also just more from a general transformation perspective, so that we have more ownership of this project and that we can better leverage the sure step methodology to make it more of a transformative methodology rather than just a software deployment methodology. And the reason this is also important is because these projects are complex and the more complex some of the things listed in the pie chart here, the more complex the project's gonna be. So in other words, the things listed or the things with yellow stars next to them are things that are uh, have the highest impact on the overall transformation time, cost, complexity, risk, duration, all that stuff is affected by everything in the blue chart, but especially those things in yellow with yellow stars. So the bigger the process change that we're gonna make as a result of this D365 project, the uh, more complex and longer the project's gonna take. The bigger impact to people and the, the, the further along we're, we're moving people as a result of this journey, the longer it's gonna take, the more complex it is. And then technology, if we're, if we're starting from a green screen AS400 legacy system, that's a much bigger jump than if we are using uh, you know, Dynamics AX and we're just upgrading to D365. Two very different scenarios. So the reason I show this slide is because is the SureStep methodology does not address these uh, complexity factors. We need to figure out how do these complexity factors need or require us to tailor the SureStep methodology for our unique organization and our, and our situation. So that's a, another thing, is, is, as good as that, is that sure step methodology is, it's, it's a cookie cutter approach that doesn't necessarily apply to our organization. We've got to figure out how do we apply it to our organization. And so when we're working with clients on their D365 deployments, and we have a handful of them right now that we're helping them through their D365 tr uh, transformations, we end up acting as an extension of the client's project team, working with the system integrator to help manage that system integrator, make sure that we're deliberately using the system integrator in a way that's cost effective and, and effective overall, and also making sure we identify the risks and mitigate the risk of the overall transformation. So again, being that client advocate that's gonna help make sure that that project is successful and that we're managing the system integrator well, and that the overall transformation is, isn't just a software deployment, but an actual business and digital transformation. So that's the role we typically play uh, with our clients on some of these projects. And one of the first things we do when we're working with these clients is before we start unpacking the sure step methodology, we want to look at what are all the things we need to do to get ready for that. The things that may seem like it's going to delay a project or take you longer because you're not starting on the technical and functional stuff until later, but it's going to, at the end of the day, it's going to speed up things and it's going to make things go a lot faster and cheaper by doing this stuff up front. So we have a whole nother video on my YouTube channel that you can uh, search up D365 implementation readiness. I have a whole video that unpacks this one slide and breaks it up into more detail. For the purpose of today though, I'll just talk at a high level of some of those work streams and the things that we need to um, cover prior to leveraging that SureStep methodology. First is strategic and executive alignment. The SureStep methodology is not gonna help you get aligned and figure out what your executive vision strategy is for this overall transformation. That's something you need to define up front. That's something we help our clients do prior to jumping into the SureStep part of designing and building stuff. On the operational readiness side of things, think of that as the business process improvement side of things at, at a high level. We're not getting down into the workflows and the details of D365 yet, but we're defining at a higher level, what are our common business processes? What are our strategic processes that we want to define in a little bit more detail and make sure that we allow those processes to drive D365 rather than assuming that D365 is going to tell us somehow how to run our business. So having that clear business blueprint for what we want to look like, not a, not a technical blueprint for the software, but more of the business blueprint that the technology will fit within. It's much like building a house when you're a general contractor, you need a business blueprint to start with before you start bringing in the plumbers and the electricians and the drywall guys and all that stuff. You wouldn't bring those guys in without a blueprint. And for the same reason, you shouldn't be bringing your system integrator or the activate methodology, or I'm sorry, the sure step methodology until you have that, that clear business blueprint in place. So that's a really important aspect of this, is making sure you've got that operational readiness uh, component in place before you start with the sure step methodology. People readiness is the organizational change, but more at that strategic level. Sure step does have 
uh, components that address the training and communications more at that tactical level, particularly later in the project as it, it comes time to train end users. There's a whole ton of stuff that needs to happen prior to uh, that, and, and that's what this is intended to do, is to figure out how our roles and responsibilities gonna change and how do we want the organization to look prior to rolling out D365 using that sure step methodology. And then the technical readiness component is another piece here where we want to look at two things. One is the overall architecture, how D365 is going to be deployed, what the scope, what modules we're gonna use, what the scope is, and what other third-party systems we might tie into that and just having a clear vision for that. The other piece, in addition to the, call it the physical infrastructure piece of it, is more the um, organizational infrastructure. How do we build the internal IT functional technical capabilities to allow us to have more ownership of this project and to be on more even footing with our system integrator or VAR or whoever is implementing this for us. So that piece, the more we can get a head start on that, we're gonna be a lot more effective in deploying that sure step methodology and leveraging our VAR system integrator later on. And then finally, project governance and planning. One thing that in general, most VARs and system integrators in the D365 ecosystem that we work with are not good at is project governance, risk management, having a clear governance structure in place. And that's something that really you need to own and have at the more, call it the program management level, the implementing organization level, and the system integrator of the VAR needs to fall within that, that framework. So we need to find what that looks like up front before we ever start with the SureStep methodology and the system integrator. We also wanna have a clear plan for how we're gonna roll this out, what our overall transformation strategy is. All that stuff needs to be defined early on. And one of the other components that we use throughout an entire D365 transformation is this QA framework. So we help clients make sure that we've identified and uncovered risks using a number of different lenses throughout the transformation. And more importantly, we're identifying how are we gonna mitigate those risks and what are we gonna do about the risks? What's the risk management plan and how are we gonna make sure we avoid them? So again, it's acting as that extension of our client's PMO and really helping make sure that the, the uh, fox isn't guarding the hen house, so to speak, because system integrators and VARs typically aren't good at or don't want to identify the risks of the work they're doing because it, in some ways it, it could be personal because you're calling them out as something that's not working or there's a problem in the transformation, here's what we need to do. That's okay, that stuff happens all the time no matter who's implementing. So the key is how do we identify those risks and how do we mitigate those risks? So I hope this has been helpful. I hope it gives you something to think about as you start your D365 journey. I uh, hope it gives you something to think about as you try to figure out how are we gonna use SureStep to help enable our transformation. If you have questions or you'd like to chat more about this or just bounce around ideas, feel free to use me as a sounding board. Reach out to me on my cell phone, which is listed here. My email address, you can also connect with me on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter as well. So I hope this is helpful and uh, look forward to seeing and chatting with you soon. Take care.